Hello students. Today I want to talk to you about the skills that you need to get started with uh, application support. Uh, the, these are the absolute necessary skills. Uh, you don't have to be a professional in each area, but you need to know the basics to get started. So let me let me start by saying you need to you need to first know an application stack. You need to know, uh, depending on um, the, the programming language that you're going to choose, right? So, um, and I'm kind of hesitant. I don't know whether I should talk about the programming language first or application stack. But depending on what programming language you choose to learn, uh, you're going to have to use an application stack that is relevant to that programming language. For me, I chose um, JavaScript. Um, so that, that introduced me to JavaScript, uh, ecosystem, uh, for example, for the backend, I use Node for, for the front end, I use React there, uh, there for ORM, you know, depending on whether you use MongoDB or, or SQL or NoSQL database, uh, you use SQLite or, or Mongoose. So there, there are many options here. So Depending on the programming language you choose, you, you'll you have to learn an application stack. That doesn't mean you're going to become a developer. When I say learn an application stack, meaning that just understand what these components are, how they interact with each other, what is a middleware to a web server, what is an ORM to a database, how MVC works, what is the model view controller, how, how does each piece fall into place. And, and again, the expectation here is that you're not going to be a developer, but you, you need to understand that how these components interact with each other. Then you need to know um, SQL and NoSQL. So, Whatever variants that you choose, you know, whether you use T-SQL, MySQL, you, you need to know some SQL because you're almost guaranteed that you're going to be asked to uh, interact with the application from the back end. Um, and knowing SQL is a game changer. Knowing how to set up a database, how to uh, make, ba make backups, how to interact with data, what are different uh, select and join statements? Um, how you could filter data? These are these are things you really need to know. So spend, you're going to have to spend some time here, maybe getting a book or taking a course on, on SQL. Um, you basically need to be comfortable here. Uh, this is an area that knowing it is is really a game changer. Um, so let's move next to system administration. So any application you have, regardless of what application stack it's running on, you need to know the basic administration. You need to know how to how to navigate the the command line. You need to know how to mount a drive. How to how to do the day to day operations. You know, so that system administration is a must. And I say preferably Linux. Just because if you know that um, it, it, the, the jobs that are high paying uh, and the enterprise level applications, it, when you're almost guaranteed that they're running on a, on a Linux machine. Uh, and I'm not trying to discredit Windows, but preferably you just want to focus on, on Linux. Um, uh, now let's, let's move to uh, a scripting language, whether it's Bash or PowerShell. I personally chose PowerShell because early on the application that I was working with mostly were Microsoft-based applications. And I, I was dealing a lot with uh, uh, Windows servers. So I, I chose PowerShell and you, you basically need to know, you need to pack a point when it comes to scripting because you're almost guaranteed that you're going to ask to do some sort of automation or, or creating some jobs, monitoring jobs, trying to automate some, some task. Um, so having, knowing PowerShell is, is a game changer or knowing Bash, you know, if you choose to 
go with Bash. But now, when I saw Lenin PowerShell, it was an it was an earlier version of PowerShell. I think it was version two and the new release of version three. But now the newer versions, they're um, um, they have cross platform functionality. So if you learn PowerShell, it's also applicable to um, to to uh, Linux. Let's uh, move to common protocols. So you, you basically need to know these protocols. You know you need to know the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. How to use SSH? How to do SCP? I'm not going to list out all these common protocols. If you're, for example, if you're going for an entry level um, system administration certificate, you'll learn about this this common protocols and the ports that they're using and how to use them you basically need to know this because any sort of troubleshooting you're going to do um you're basically gonna gonna rely on you on the knowledge you have regarding these um different protocols next is uh, rest api you need to know at least one um API communication method. I, I use the REST because REST sits very well with um, uh, JavaScript. You know, there, there, there are many books on the topic, many videos, many resources. You, you need to know at least one way of API communication. And, and there are multiple API to choose from. I chose REST because it's the most common one. There, there are many resources on it. And once you learn this, it's possible to learn the other ones. Now let's go back to programming language. You saw that I got really conflicted when I was talking about application stack and a programming language. Why do you need to know a programming language? Your application support, what, why do you really need to know a programming language? Well, it's a twofold. First, you get to appreciate the technology that the application is built on, but more importantly, any new um, uh, any new job that you apply for, they might ask you to solve algorithmic questions, uh, data structure, and an algorithm that's become a big part of interviews. The problem is you have so many applicants, and when you have so many applicants, how do you filter through them? It, makes the job of a hiring manager very difficult. Let's say a job has 80, 80 candidates, how do you stand out? So the easiest way to filter out through those candidates is to to give them an algorithmic question. I, I know it's a little bit unfair. It's probably an area that is most debated, but for application support type of jobs, you'll be even you'll be either given SQL questions, meaning that they give you a database and they ask you to write the extraction, uh, or they give you an algorithmic question and they ask you to solve it. It's that's why you need to know at least one programming language and you need to be comfortable with that programming language, and set aside. The interview and the algorithmic questions, knowing that programming language helps you uh, become familiar with the with the stack of, that is relevant to that application, uh, the, the particular language that you're focusing on. So, all right, guys, the rest of it comes uh, in experience. You know, looking at uh, uh, logs, understanding the common problems. The more you work, the more experience you get. Um, one of the uh, one of the teachers that I had that I, that he was very influential. Um, um, he he uh, he was doing application support for almost fifteen years, and I asked him, "Don't you get tired of it?" And he said, "Look, every day I become better at my job, and, and truly he was he is that good." So if Let's say he's at the point that if he sees an error message, he doesn't necessarily need to um, look it up. Most likely, he's seen it before. So, as the idea is that as you're at the work and you become more familiar with the given application stack that you're working with, you understand what are its shortcomings are, what are its needs, how you could maintain it better. It's very common that you'll work with two or three. 
uh, applications depending on the size of the application. If the application is massive, most likely you'll just focus on a single application. But in a smaller organizations that are limited, they might ask you to maybe to be in charge of two or three applications. Uh, I, I prefer that to be in charge of two or three applications because then you get to learn a lot more. But if it's if, if it's one application, every release of it is going to come with a bunch of problem so you'll be working with developers you'll be working with your with the clients of that application whether it's internal or external but the the job is never going to be boring you always learn more but the, but these are the essentials and i'm not asking you to be a guru in in every area but you you need to have some foundations and it's okay to know the basics and learn as you go but the worst thing that can happen to you is to get a job, get hired into it, and then be clueless about, let's say, system administration. And, you know, when they ask you to SSH into a machine, you don't know how to do it. And they ask you to change a directory, make a backup, move some files. You don't know how to do that. So these are what's listed here is, is the absolute necessity. All right, guys, um, thanks for listening. Let me know what you think.